uh, oh, uh, this is uh, part two of the uh, parasites that they uh, uh, infect um, and infest the uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract. Uh, we talked about uh, the uh, uh, interbiba histolytica and its uh, uh, significance, the one that causes uh, invasive uh, uh, type of a uh, diarrhea. And also we talked about the Giardia uh, uh, lamblia and Giardiasis, uh, which is associated with a uh, non-invasive type of a uh, diarrhea. And uh, as uh, we talked about, it's so important to remember that by doing simple stool analysis, you can see whether your diarrhea is invasive or non-invasive. The invasive diarrhea will be associated uh, with uh, 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 red blood cells, uh, white blood cells as well, uh, uh, and um, uh, a mucus, while the uh, non-invasive type of a diarrhea, we don't see the fecal leukocytes or the uh, uh, red blood cells uh, in the uh, uh, stool uh, uh, analysis. And um, you should know all the microorganisms that are associated with the invasive type of a diarrhea and the uh, organisms that are associated with the non-invasive uh, type of uh, a uh, diarrhea. And in, in each of those, you should know uh, the uh, structure uh, of the uh, organism that we talk about and its classification, of course, and its uh, life cycle how the infection is uh, uh, taken uh, place, uh, the epidemiology, uh, of course, and uh, the uh, pathogenesis, and then how to, and the clinical presentation, of course, and then the uh, diagnosis, how to make the uh, diagnosis, and the most important thing is in the uh, stool analysis, uh, as we said, and then uh, after the uh, diagnosis, we talk about the treatment and what is the drug of choice that we use for uh, such a treatment. And finally, we talk about prevention. And uh, all of those, uh, the prevention is the most important thing is uh, to having uh, uh, here a proper uh, sanitary uh, conditions, uh, general hygienic uh, measures, proper toileting. Uh, this is uh, the uh, single most important uh, here feature uh, that uh, we keep uh, always uh, talk about. And uh, uh, we explained uh, uh, in the first uh, uh, lecture uh, about uh, the uh, intamoeba uh, histolytica, the invasive type of uh, the uh, uh, diarrhea, and in the <coughs> as well as the non-invasive, uh, the uh, Giardia uh, lamblia, uh, of course, and uh, uh, we talked about uh, their structure and their life cycle, and of course about uh, the epidemiology, how we do get infected, and uh, of course uh, uh, how to uh, the pathogenesis, the mechanism of uh, the uh, diarrhea, and then. We talked about the uh, diagnosis and the uh, treatment. We, in the second part, like today, we will be talking about the second part about the uh, other parasites that are uh, associated or infest uh, the uh, uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract. And uh, in, in those, we will talk about uh, others. Uh, we are going to have so many other uh, parasites that are associated uh, with uh, uh, diarrhea, uh, like for example the uh, Cryptosporidium uh, parvum or Cryptosporidium muris. Uh, these are an opportunistic uh, uh, protozoa uh, that usually comes with abuse of antibiotics. Abuse of antibiotics, Cryptosporidium uh, parvum or muris and the cryptosporidium, uh, it comes uh, from uh, the uh, uh, two words crypto, uh, it means uh, hidden, sporidium, spore, the hidden 
uh, spores. And uh, as you know, those are uh, small uh, uh, parasites uh, that usually infest the ga gastro uh, uh, intestinal uh, tract and usually uh, they come uh, from animals most likely through the uh, fecal oral route when the feces uh, get contaminated uh, with the uh, spores uh, of these uh, uh, organisms and um, very important to know that uh, when a patient is on antibiotics for a uh, longer period of time, uh, he or she is going to develop diarrhea. And we call that uh, uh, diarrhea uh, associated with antibiotics uh, abuse. Uh, and uh, cryptosporidium uh, is the organism that uh, uh, you have to think of. And we treat it as well with other types of uh, uh, antibiotics here. Uh, like, uh, uh, for example, paromomyosin, uh, uh, for example, which is very important uh, to know. Uh, these are caused by uh, abuse of antibiotics, and we treat them also with other types of uh, antibiotics. So, uh, uh, the uh, cryptosporidium then, or the hidden uh, spores, are usually uh, the uh, uh, complications of uh, uh, antibiotics uh, uh, abuse, as uh, we said, uh, antibiotics associated uh, uh, diarrhea. And when we st stop using the uh, antibiotics and use the other antibiotics that uh, here we use for the treatment of uh, the uh, cryptosporidium, for example, uh, here then the patient is going to develop a complete recovery here no complications are going to be associated uh, uh, here uh, with these types of infections so the treatment then uh, for the cryptosporidiosis is to stop the use of uh, antibiotics that caused the diarrhea and use other antimicrobial agents specifically uh, for the uh, cryptosporidium and the recovery is almost 100% uh, sure for that. So just in uh, summary, uh, the uh, cryptosporidiosis, the hidden uh, spores, are very important to know about with the abuse of uh, antibiotics here and their uh, life cycle is just from the spore uh, into, as you can see, the uh, uh, trophozoite like uh, condition then develop into the spore uh, again and these spores uh, they coalesce together and they block uh, the absorptive uh, surface of uh, the uh, uh, villi and so uh, profuse uh, watery type of diarrhea uh, uh, is going to uh, uh, take um, uh, a place and um, the diagnosis just simply by uh, uh, doing a stool analysis and and, and showing uh, here these uh, uh, spores in the uh, stool and then we can you have to stop the use of antibiotics and then to use uh, other uh, medications uh, uh, for example uh, for uh, treatment uh, like, for example, uh, here we could use the uh, uh, macrolides, like uh, the erythromycin, for example, and also uh, other medications uh, uh, like uh, nitrosanoxamide, for example. So uh, those and the, uh, uh, the macro macrolides, uh, if we use those, uh, you can uh, here interfere with the uh, growth uh, of these uh, uh, protozoa. And the prevention, uh, of course, is not to abuse the antibiotic and uh, uh, here minimize the use of antibiotics unless uh, uh, it is really uh, needed. Otherwise, patients are going to develop diarrhea uh, for a longer period of time and dehydration will be associated with that.
again, I mean, if you do uh, a stool analysis, uh, uh, you can see the uh, cryptosporidium uh, spores or the hidden spores uh, in the uh, stool analysis. Uh, although not that many physicians, uh, they do that uh, for diagnosis. Any patient who develops uh, diarrhea uh, for a longer period of time, uh, it is uh, uh, an antibiotics associated diarrhea. Mainly uh, it is because of cryptosporidium uh, parvum uh, until uh, uh, just uh, uh, proving uh, otherwise. So uh, again, then uh, it is so important then to remember that uh, abuse of antibiotics can lead to diarrhea caused by cryptosporidiosis here, and you can make the diagnosis by seeing the uh, OO cysts uh, in uh, the uh, stool. And the minute that you will stop abusing the antibiotics, then the patient is going to recover. This is extremely important to know. Patient on antibiotics for a longer period of time, especially the broad spectrum ones, will develop uh, diarrhea. And the causative agent is cryptosporidium or cryptosporidiosis. And you will be seeing the oocysts in uh, just simply doing uh, stool analysis. Very important to remember, just when you stop the antibiotics, then the patient is going to recover. And this slide will show the uh, OO cyst just in simply uh, just doing a, a stool analysis uh, for the uh, cryptosporidium. Uh, but um, also, you can see in uh, a stool analysis uh, other uh, uh, protozoa that you don't that you don't see uh, 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 routinely in uh, a stool analysis, and some of those are called the cyclospora and the isospora, and those also can be associated here with uh, 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 diarrhea, and those also uh, they need. Uh, a, uh, a special uh, here way of uh, 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 stains and uh, uh, here techniques uh, to make uh, the diagnosis uh, cyclospora and isospora usually they are larger than the cryptosporidium and the others that we have uh, uh, talked about and the diagnosis usually is so difficult that sometimes you could uh, be using an immunofluorescence technique uh, for their uh, uh, identification. It is um, extremely uh, uh, important to uh, differentiate uh, the uh, uh, organisms uh, that uh, are associated with uh, 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 diarrhea, the protozoa that's associated with diarrhea uh, from uh, the uh, uh, cryptosporidium. Uh, for example, and others. And uh, 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 among uh, uh, those uh, like the isospora, uh, for example, that has to be uh, differentiated from the uh, uh, cryptosporidium. And uh, um, those, uh, the uh, 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 treatment of uh, those is, is so simple uh, compared uh, to the uh, uh, cryptosporidium, uh, where just uh, uh, replacement of the water and uh, uh, electrolytes and the use of the uh, uh, special antibiotics that we have talked about uh, before is enough and stop the abuse of antibiotics uh, here will uh, stop uh, these types uh, of uh, infections. So uh, the uh, uh, a protozoa that uh, infects the uh, gastrointestinal tract. Uh, we uh, still have uh, others as well that can be associated with uh, diarrhea that rarely you are going to hear about. Uh, like, for example, the uh, microsporidia, uh, the cryptosporidium and microsporidia, which is much smaller 
than the cryptosporidum as you can see and those they can infect the cell and they can uh, almost uh, uh, like uh, uh, inject their uh, here nucleic material uh, inside those uh, as you can see here the microsporidia and they can go from one uh, cell into the other and the, then the infection uh, will be so pre predominant uh, into all of the uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, it's extremely rare that you are going to encounter uh, such types of um, uh, infections and uh, just you will keep uh, uh, reading about those uh, in uh, textbooks uh, like for example the uh, encephalozoan uh, for example intestinalis uh, as well that uh, can be uh, identified by uh, DNA analysis uh, it's not so difficult to make uh, a uh, diagnosis. The uh, second uh, uh, part of the uh, parasites that uh, they uh, infest the gastrointestinal tract are the worms and uh, uh, the uh, worms that they infect the gastrointestinal tract are some called the round worms uh, or what we call the nematodes nematodes and uh, and those uh, nematodes are present in the intestine so we call them uh, uh, intestinal uh, uh, nematodes and we have other worms uh, that are present in tissues so we can call them tissue uh, nematodes as well and uh, in, in those, so whether they are intestinal or tissue nematodes, sometimes even part of the life cycle of these worms uh, ends up in tissues, uh, you have to know the uh, life cycle and uh, uh, also uh, how to make a diagnosis, identification, and general uh, clinical presentation, uh, as well as uh, the uh, treatment and the a drug of choice or surgery or whatever we do to treat these types of uh, uh, infections. We'll uh, continue talking about uh, the uh, uh, rest of the uh, round worms and uh, we will be talking about uh, the uh, 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 enterobius uh, uh, vermicularis uh, or the uh, pinworms. Enterobus vermicularis, some normal pinworms, and uh, we have uh, a tricuris tricura, and the disease we call it trichuriasis, trichuriasis. And also we have the uh, trichinella uh, spiralis, also, which is uh, one of the tissue worms as well. Uh, here associated with that. Uh, also, uh, the prototype of the round worm, we call it the Ascaris lambricoides, some of them are Ascaris, Ascaris lambricoides. Uh, this is the large intestinal uh, uh, nematode or round uh, uh, worm. So the disease, we call it Ascariasis, Ascariasis. And also, we have others, uh, like for example, the hookworms. We call it uh, Nicator americanus, hookworm, and uh, Ancelostoma uh, duodenal uh, hookworm. Very important to remember uh, their uh, names. And we have others, we call it Ancelostoma brasiliensis that are associated with uh, tissues. We'll talk about it in just a second. Ancelostoma brasiliensis uh, causes, for example, a disease called uh, cutaneous larva migrans. That means uh, a larva that migrates uh, in the uh, skin. Cutaneous larva migrans. 
and we have the uh, Strongyloides uh, stercoralis, another worm, round worm, Strongyloides, Strongyloides stercoralis, and the name of the disease is uh, Strongyloidiasis, Strongyloidiasis. So we will be talking about those very, very important here to remember. In all of these uh, uh, parasitic uh, uh, round worms, we have to know uh, some general uh, uh, properties uh, regarding uh, the morphology of uh, these uh, worms. And very, very important to understand the life cycle here in, uh, in our body and very important to see uh, if it has a stage uh, outside the uh, human body uh, or not. And then uh, what is the uh, diagnostic stage that we use uh, for uh, identification and the diagnosis, uh, whether uh, uh, in the uh, uh, body or outside the body. And then uh, here after the uh, diagnosis, then we have uh, to treat how to treat uh, those uh, worms so uh, for example uh, here uh, the uh, first one which is uh, uh, enterobius uh, uh, vermicularis and so the uh, disease we, we call it enterobiasis we mean by that the presence of the uh, worm in our body, enterobius uh, vermicularis. It, it enters here through the uh, uh, mode of transmission into the body. Is uh, We have to know whether through the mouth or through the skin, uh, for example, in other worms. So this worm, enterobius vermicularis, uh, is usually uh, here uh, uh, through the uh, mouth, uh, the uh, uh, here the uh, ova goes through the uh, mouth, and then uh, how it migrates uh, in our body here uh, through the uh, uh, intestinal uh, phase, for example, uh, from the intestine uh, directly. Uh, from outside into the intestine and that's it or some others uh, they have to go through the lungs uh, so whether they have a pulmonary stage or not so this is very very important either a life cycle is simple and the mouth intestine mouth intestine or uh, the other life cycle uh, mouth uh, and then outside uh, through pulmonary stage uh, very very important and uh, from there uh, would be uh, coughed into the uh, mouth and then into the intestine again so in each of those uh, worms that we are going to study in the life cycle you have to know whether it's just directly concise to the GI tract or they have a pulmonary stage and it's ex extremely important to know if it has a pulmonary stage because uh, if the uh, larva goes uh, through the lungs, then it's going to be associated with what we call uh, isonophilia. So the uh, uh, stage of isonophilia uh, then in these worms depends whether part of the life cycle uh, goes into the uh, lungs. So this is extremely important uh, to know in the uh, identification uh, step uh, of the uh, life cycle. So in the uh, life cycle of uh, these worms, you have to know what is the name of the infectious stage. Second, we have to know how we do get infected very important and the uh, uh, third uh, step in the uh, life cycle how they can go for example from the uh, respiratory tract and then back into the uh, uh, GI tract 
very important to know how we do get infected. What is the name of the uh, infectious uh, stage? You know, because if we do understand how we do get infected, then easily uh, we can take precautions and uh, uh, prevent this type uh, of an infection. So in those worms, understanding the life cycle, how we do get infected, uh, then what is the stage that we use for identification or uh, the uh, uh, diagnosis, and then uh, after that, how we are going to treat uh, such uh, worms. So the um, Enterobius vermicularis or the uh, pinworm, it's uh, one of the uh, small uh, parasites that uh, infests the uh, gastrointestinal tract. Uh, their uh, uh, just uh, their location uh, in our uh, uh, GI tract is usually uh, in the uh, cecum, and then. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, travel through the uh, anal uh, orifice and over there uh, the uh, female uh, lays down her eggs in the uh, perianal uh, uh, region so uh, uh, when the female yani, gets uh, uh, a pregnant and wants to lay down her eggs it goes to the perianal region and then lays down her eggs. Uh, and, uh, and then the patient could uh, scratch their anal orifice, uh, so the eggs uh, goes uh, into the uh, uh, fingers, and then uh, they, they could uh, from there go back into the mouth, and then into the intestine, mean, uh, and then into the uh, uh, cecum, and over there, uh, they uh, hatch into the adult worm, uh, males and females, and they copulate, and then the female lays down her eggs at the perianal region. So you can see uh, female uh, worms going back and forth out of the uh, anal uh, orifice, which causes severe uh, anal uh, uh, itching and ulceration uh, to the uh, anal uh, orifice. So the life cycle is so simple. It's in the uh, uh, here the perianal uh, region, back to the mouth of the uh, patient, then to the cecum, again perianal region, and then back into the mouth and so on. So the life cycle is so simple, and uh, severe anal itching uh, is associated with these uh, uh, roundworms, and because. Uh, these worms, they look like a pen, uh, means uh, uh, then we call them uh, pen worms. And so the main manifestations and the clinical presentation of these uh, pen worms is severe anal itching, especially at night or when they want the females to lay down their eggs. They go out from the anal orifice uh, into the perianal region uh, laying down their eggs, and so this causes severe uh, anal uh, itching uh, and the associated uh, here in infection and the bleeding associated with the severe anal itching. The uh, second uh, worm uh, is the whipworm, and we call it the whipworm because it looks like a, a uh, whip. It's about uh, uh, four or five uh, centimeters uh, in length. Uh, the uh, uh, head uh, is usually uh, has a, a needle-like uh, organ that uh, the uh, uh, female usually uses for uh, attachment. And uh, uh, here, uh, male and female uh, they uh, copulate and then uh, they produce a uh, large number of eggs uh, uh, here uh, at the uh, perianal uh, region and those uh, uh, they will uh, uh, 
uh, hatch uh, or the eggs I mean uh, could uh, go from one patient into another uh, and so they will hatch by the fecal oral uh, route uh, going into another patient and then they hatch into uh, the uh, uh, cecum and uh, over there uh, they will uh, develop into males and uh, femo females in the uh, lower gastrointestinal uh, tract and um, uh, then uh, they produce a very large number of uh, eggs uh, and uh, the uh, eggs uh, has uh, uh, here what we call uh, bipolar prominences that means they have uh, uh, here tapered uh, uh, ends about 30 40 uh, micrometers in diameter when you see them once you'll never forget them uh, tricurus tricura uh, eggs uh, uh, produce uh, in the uh, uh, lower part of the uh, intestinal tract uh, they uh, uh, hatch in the cecum uh, and then uh, uh, form um, uh, more embryos and uh, and then into uh, adult worms they copulate uh, over there uh, uh, and then they produce very large number of eggs uh, in the uh, cecum and uh, from there uh, uh, here uh, they uh, uh, grow up into the adult uh, worms uh, and, and so on. So the infectious stage uh, here are uh, the uh, embryonated eggs or the mature eggs that they come out uh, from the uh, intestine, tricurus tricura, and uh, through fecal oral route. This is the uh, commonest way uh, of uh, the life cycle and how people uh, they do uh, uh, get uh, uh, infected fecal oral route and then they go into the cecum again and then they mature into the adult uh, worms they copulate produce very large number uh, of uh, embryonated eggs after they mature uh, and so on the life cycle will keep going uh, on and on uh, again uh, these uh, uh, worms they bind uh, uh, b because here uh, they are uh, having uh, so many uh, eggs and they down at the perianal uh, region and uh, when they grow up uh, uh, then uh, the uh, spear that they form uh, keep attached uh, into the mucosal lining of the uh, intestine and so when they pass out uh, sometimes uh, they will cause what we call uh, rectal prolapse because uh, the worm is attached through the spear uh, here into the mucosal lining and when they pass out they keep attached to the mucosal lining so they will uh, pull with them uh, the inner part of the mucosal lining of the intestine and cause what we call uh, rectal uh, prolapse and the diagnosis is simple is just uh, by showing uh, here the uh, ova or the eggs of Tricurus tricura uh, that has the bipolar prominences uh, bipolar prominences this is uh, the diagnostic uh, form uh, of the uh, uh, of this uh, worm so the life cycle then of Tricurus tricura is so simple uh, they don't have an extra intestinal uh, uh, stage uh, from the uh, intestine and then goes the eggs from one uh, patient into another uh, the only thing that uh, they have uh, to hatch uh, uh, here outside the uh, uh, intestine and the infectious stage is the embryonated uh, eggs uh, so by uh, ingesting the embryonated eggs uh, then we will do get uh, infected and we make a diagnosis by showing the uh, uh, identifying 
uh, here the infectious stage, which is uh, the uh, uh, embryonated uh, eggs. These are the diagnostic form uh, here of the uh, uh, worm. And the treatment that uh, we use here is the uh, uh, mebendazole. Uh, mebendazole or Vermox is the drug of choice that we use for uh, treatment. Prevention, of course, uh, here it's the general uh, uh, hygienic uh, uh, measures, uh, how people they do uh, uh, get infected by being exposed to the uh, ova, by uh, the uh, uh, external defecation or people or we call it indiscriminate defecation and uh, laying down the eggs outside uh, here the uh, human body and so being exposed to the embryonated uh, eggs uh, here makes uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the infectious cycle uh, so easily uh, spreadable uh, these uh, worms so the uh, uh, embryonated eggs uh, are the infectious stage here in Trichuris uh, uh, Trichura and uh, uh, the uh, uh, rectal uh, prolapse is one of the uh, manifestations of these uh, 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 worms uh, uh, as one of the complications that could develop and uh, treatment is the same the drug of choice uh, is uh, called uh, uh, mebendazole or Vermox is still the drug of choice used for treatment. So this is what we were talking about. Uh, these are the uh, uh, whipworms bound to through the spears uh, into the mucosal lining of the intestine. So here when the patient uh, defecates, the shearing force, we call it, uh, of the worm, Triculus tricura, will cause the, uh, pro uh, the uh, uh, clinical presentation, we call it the rectal uh, prolapse, by uh, worms attached into the mucosal lining and during the defecation process, pulling of these worms, the mucosa, causing the uh, rectal prolapse.